Hi crafters, it's Karen and I have an art journal process that I wanted to share. This is my finished page and my idea for this was to just use a lot of these die cuts and things um, that I have had from previous projects and to use them up on an art journal page. Like for example, I used some of the mixed media flowers that I've I created a little while back. I used up some of the uh, the rest of these butterflies, ex like mixed media butterflies that I have from a few projects back. Um, let's see. I used up some uh, die dies that I or die cuts that I had cut from some random dies that I have of some foliage. So I just wanted to use some of these things up. So my idea was to make it look as if the vines and the foliage was on the outside of a building wall. So um, you'll see that as we go along. I'm going to create some texture with this brick uh, paper from the paper studio. And I'm just going to layer it with some old book paper just uh, for some uh, dimension. Trying to make sure that my gesso is dry enough for me to add my paper. See, I'm just going to layer the old book page paper with the brick pattern paper that I have there. And I'm using my Liquitex gel medium to matte gel medium to apply this. I really do like the way that the this particular layout came out or this art journal page came out. I'm glad that I was able to use the different pieces that I had taken out for myself, but um, it did end up being a little busier than I had envisioned. <laughs> but it was a, a relaxing process. Now this is how I had everything laid out with my mixed media flowers and some foliage in the bottom right and this old uh, bird cage that I had cut from some gold foil paper um, at one time or another. I believe that's a spellbinder die that that bird cage is from and I have it in the top left hand side and it was supposed to look as though you know the um, the cage was just on the outside of the building. So I'm, I mixed together some paints. Yeah, this is a metallic steel blue. I don't have the name in front of me, but I just like the look of it. And I mixed it with some white. I didn't like the way the brush strokes were making it look, so I decided to use this, um, it's like a cosmetic sponge, and apply my paint that way. It just as I you know how I'm smudging it on there and dabbing it on it just seemed to create a little bit more texture and um, it just blended much better than uh, when I was using the brush so I'm adding this gold tone and I'm sorry I think that's it's like okra or something I don't have it in front of me either but it's a uh, an Americana um, you know acrylic paint these are both acrylic paints and 
um, I just added that just to add a little bit of um, I don't know to to lighten it up to give it a more um, tinted look to it rather than that bright clean blue you know I wanted it I didn't want it to look that clean um, because in, in my mind this was the outside of a building you know I wanted it to look older so it's like a tinted tinted <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it but that is what I was going for and so the acrylic paint dries pretty quickly and now I'm going to use my gel medium to adhere my different pieces and see I'm adding these foliage um, as if it these are vines just growing down you know from the top of the building uh, so that's why I adhered them here and these are all pieces that I had cut previously for another you know project or what have you that I've had in my little box of die cuts so none of this is anything that I cut specifically for this particular page and these pieces here that I'm adding are from a Martha Stewart punch those green leaves there so I'm just layering them all up along the outside of my building. These flowers, that's from the Tim Holtz, uh, I believe it's called Stribble, Scribbles, um, Sizzix Thinlet. And these are the mixed media flowers that I created a little while back. And I, I want to create some more of these flowers, except in different color waves. I don't want them to be so bright. It was very hard for me to use these flowers in projects because they are so bright. I mean, um, I make them work in this particular project because I go over it with, um, like with a brown tone to kind of tone them down a little bit. But I want to create some other mixed media flowers in um, softer colors, more user-friendly colors. So I'm adding my birdcage in the top left. Like it's hanging from a tree or something near the building and I'm going to adhere my butterflies and these butterflies are left over from a previous art journal process um, page I created these uh, butterflies using the Stampendous uh, stamp set and I think they just came out so sweet. Uh, if I remember I'm going to put the link to the video where I created these butterflies in the description box. If you have any type of butterfly stamp it really is quite easy to create these butterflies with these colors and the mixed media look to them. Now I decided to add another piece of this brick paper to the center of my page here just for another uh, dimensional look so that it, it looks like the stucco is peeling off of the building and exposing that brick. In my head that's how it goes. <laughs> that's what it looks like. That's what I was going for. Can 
you hear my cat? I don't know if you could hear my cat. I'm really sorry if you can. She's so sweet. She's getting older, so she just walks around crying like that. It's the vet said it was kind of uh, like cat, cat dementia, you know? She's just becoming a cranky older cat. My poor shadow. So I use this Bow Bunny um, stamp set for the brick texture and I pointed out here where I used it and I thought that came out very very cool just to give a little bit more texture to that wall so that to make it more clear what I was going for and then that's the Martha Stewart punch that I used for the foliage. Now I'm going to use my Faber-Castell big brush pit pens and add a little bit of dimension around these butterflies and some of the flowers. And now this is how I darken the, my flowers up. I used the brown color of the um, Fabricist style big brush um, pen. And I just kind of scribble over those flowers and then rub it out to create, you know, to give it like a, let's see that, give it like a sepia, more sepia type tone just to tone, tone down some of that brightness because those bright, bright flowers, you know, didn't match the color tones, the other color tones of this page. So that's how I toned down those, the, um, those bright colors. I could have used Tim Holtz Distress Ink as well to tone down those colors, the bright colors as well. So I'm using the Black Soot Distress Ink to outline my page just to frame it out a little bit and it helped to make the images and the colors pop a little bit. I did um, punch out some more of the Martha Stewart uh, green leaves there. And now I'm using the um, Prima pastel crayons, watercolor pastel crayons, and the black one to go over the outside edge of the page. The black suit just wasn't enough, so I'm using the black Prima pastel, oil pastel pen. And that, that just works a lot better. Framing it in the black just makes those colors and the images pop a little bit more. I'm going to do some highlighting with my white um, gel pen. And I just, I, I don't know when to stop using this pen because it's so fun to doodle with this, with this gel pen. It's just fabulous. I love this gel pen. But, uh, yeah, so I might overdo it with the with this white gel pen, but I, I think it comes together. I just have a good time going around and doodling. <laughs> Even after I turned off the camera, I did a little bit more doodling, so maybe you'll notice that in the photos. I'm just highlighting the different leaves and bringing in a little bit of light into that cage. Then I decide to um, accent the butterflies a little bit. And now I, I decide I want to use this white acrylic paint to bring in some white splatters and 
I really need to practice my splatters. <laughs> I wanted this to be more of a fine splatter, you know, with smaller splatters, but I got big droplets. That's okay. I'm, I'm happy with the page at any rate. <laughs> And then I do use this gold color spray from Recollections and I just put some gold droplets and you can't tell in the video but in person um, you can see that shimmer. There's a lot of shimmer in the Recollections color gold color, color spray. It, it really is sweet. So I'm trying to pick out a sentiment or um, that would work well with this with my images and um, what I ended up using was don't forget to fly use your wings live your life and this is from the Tim Holtz chit chat stickers And I thought I was going to accent a little bit with this purple um, Prima Pestel um, crayon, but I decided enough was enough, so I put that away. <laughs> Sometimes you're having such a good time with the pages that you just don't stop when you, when you should. You just keep going. So I'm highlighting my sentiment a little bit. And I'm feeling like there's something kind of missing. And then I realized that I wanted to bring in a little bit of that brick red. So I used my Faber-Castell uh, big brush pen in the red to highlight some of those bricks. Just a very little bit, just to give it a highlight of red. Um, so that it is obvious that those are in fact bricks uh, just like the pattern paper there so um, that's what I'm doing here and then I make myself put the pen down and <laughs> call it done so thanks so much for joining me on this one I appreciate it um, if you enjoy these art journal process videos, let me know by giving me a thumbs up and I am sure I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.